The Soviet Union developed the An-225, the world's largest military transport aircraft, in the late 1980s. This aviation giant has long sparked many debates and questions. People unfamiliar with aviation often wonder why such a colossal aircraft was needed at all. The An-225 was created to support the Soviet space program Buran. Its main purpose was to transport oversized and heavy cargo, including the reusable space shuttle Buran. It was a specialized aircraft derived from the more common An-124, Ruslan. Its twin tail design allowed it to carry cargo both inside the fuselage and on top. The specifications were remarkable. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 640 tons. The wingspan was about 88 meters. It could carry up to 250 tons of payload. The aircraft length was about 84 meters. Its maximum speed reached 850 kilometers per hour. The inaugural flight took place on December 21, 1988, at the height of the Soviet space program. After the dissolution of the USSR, the An-225 and parts of a second unfinished airframe were transferred to independent Ukraine. The first aircraft was occasionally used as a commercial transport plane. The second project was abandoned. The aircraft was too expensive and had little demand in a market economy. During the conflict in the Kyiv region in 2022, the first An-225 met a tragic end. The aircraft was destroyed due to the lack of proper support and protection. At present, Russia has no direct equivalent to the An-25 Mia. The An-124 Ruslan is more widely used, but its payload capacity is much lower. This raises the question, Will Russia need a new super-heavy transport aircraft similar to the An-225 in the coming decades? Let us first look at the arguments in favor. The progress in Russian aviation technology, especially the PD-35 engine, is a strong reason to consider an An-225 equivalent. This next-generation engine is expected to be far more powerful than the Soviet D-18T engines of the original An-225. With such engines, it may be possible to build a super-heavy aircraft that can match or even exceed the An-225 payload, but with only four engines instead of six. Reducing the engine count would cut costs, improve fuel economy, and make maintenance easier. Russia's main state enterprises such as Rosatom, the nuclear corporation, and Roscosmos, the space agency, continue to develop complex projects. These projects require moving very heavy and oversized machinery. A super-heavy transport plane could provide flexibility to deliver critical hardware both within Russia and abroad. Modern technologies, advanced materials, and new aerodynamics could also improve efficiency. A modern aircraft would be more economical and reliable than the original AN-225. This would make it more attractive for military, government, and possibly commercial uses. On the other hand, the financial burden of building such an aircraft would be very high. A direct copy of the MIA is not practical. Modern safety standards and engineering would increase costs. The government would need to invest heavily with no guarantee of a return. Another problem is demand. If state agencies can manage with smaller aircraft, like the planned Slan transport, there is little reason to build an even bigger plane. Such a giant aircraft would fly rarely, spend long periods on the ground, and create expensive maintenance issues. The military also has little interest in an An-225 class aircraft. Their focus is on replacing and improving the An-124 Ruslan, not building an even larger design so the defense sector may not fund such a project. In the end, reviving the An-225 depends on Russia's long-term aviation, space, and industry strategy. It would require major government funding and planning beyond the reach of private companies. The MIA was a masterpiece of Soviet engineering and a symbol of its era. It is sad that the only flying example was lost. The greater loss, however, was the breakup of the Soviet Union 
and the collapse of its industrial potential. So the revival of the Ant-225 in Russia is complex and controversial. It would depend on technology, economic priorities, and actual demand. Still, a modern version of the legendary Mria could appear by the 2030s if the government is willing to fund it. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take our channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.